Good afternoon. It's good to be with you again today, and I'm happy that you're able to join us for this segment of Ask Pastor Dan. Today's question is another good one. It's a question about when we're at the time nearing our death or at the moment of death, do we see other people? What, what do we see at that point? And, and, and once again, of course, I, I'm living, so I can't confirm exactly what goes on at that point of death or even in the hours or even sometimes days that lead up to that. I can share with you first some of my experiences in ministry uh, through the years, through 30 years of ministry, and of course uh, with relatives of my own that I've been at the bedside uh, to be with them as they pass away. I know that my grandfather, when he was winding down and when it was coming to near the end of his life, he told us that uh, he saw children and they played around his bed and uh, that gave him great peace to see those children there. I've seen other situations throughout the years where near the hour of death, people have, have reached for things, they've smiled, they've talked uh, to someone as they were preparing to pass. I've also seen people that have uh, sadly had a bit more of a, a struggle in life, and that's always hard to, to see. And, and I've watched other people just peacefully pass away uh, with no real expression on their face or anything. They just went to sleep. And so I've looked at this, that there's a variety of ways in which this can happen. I've never felt like any one way was an indicator of where that person was with God or with their faith, but it just seems that there's different circumstances and different situations uh, that I've seen along the way. I, as always, want us to take a look at what the Bible says uh, about times like this. So today we're going to look at two specific passages. One is from the uh, book of Acts, chapter 7, verse 55. And that tells about the death of the first Christian martyr by the name of Stephen. And some people attacked Stephen, and, and his death was a brutal sort of death that they stoned him. But as they were in the process of, of killing him for his faith, Stephen was noted in the book of Acts, chapter 7, verse 55. It said, he cried out, and he looked up at heaven, and he saw the glory of God the Father, and, and he saw Jesus Christ at the right hand of God the Father. And Luke, who's writing this, said that Stephen's face shone like an angel as he proclaimed that he saw the risen Christ at that moment of his death. And so the book of Acts tells us that at least in Stephen's case, he was able in that time of, of pain and, and a frightening situation, he was able to find peace and hope as he looked up and saw Jesus Christ and the glory of heaven and the Father before him. Now there's another passage of scripture. It comes from John chapter 14. And in that passage, Jesus gives us this wonderful assurance that he goes and prepares a place for us. And if he goes and prepares a place for us, he himself will come again and take us there. And that matches up so nicely with what Stephen was reported as seeing, that he saw Jesus. And so we get this sense from Christ's promise that he himself comes at the hour of death and takes us to the kingdom of heaven. And uh, I have to imagine, at, at some point in that process, maybe earlier, maybe later, in that process, we get the peace of God as we see the presence of Christ coming to help us and take us and take us home to that place. So once again, I have to say, I don't know exactly, and I certainly have seen different things as people have passed, but we have the promise of scripture that at the time of death or shortly after the time of death, as we take our last breath here on earth, our next breath is followed in the kingdom of heaven, and Christ himself comes and leads us home. For Paul said, to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. So I hope this gives us all peace, and I know a lot of our questions have talked about what, what happens you know, after we leave this place. And of course, that's a hugely important question for us in our Christian faith. And it, to, to know the peace of Christ helps us 
in this path. So again, I want to pray for us right now. I hope this has been helpful. And again, as always, I want to encourage you. Uh, Christ has offered himself for our sakes, that he might redeem us and that he might fill us with his hope and a reminder that our life here on earth is not the totality and our, our death here on earth is not the end. But in Christ Jesus, we live forever and eternity with those who love God. So that is a source of our hope. So let me pray with you again as, as we consider these things, especially as we move toward the season of Easter. Let's pray. Oh, Lord our God, we thank you for this great hope. As there's one thing that we all must endure, and that is the anxiety and fear that surrounds us when we think about death. We thank you for the hope and the peace that you've given to us through Jesus Christ by your great mercy, Father. And we thank you that you've offered us this wonderful gift of Christ's love that as we put our faith and trust in him, he delivers us from the power of sin and death. This is the great story of Easter, and it is the essence of our hope. Guide us and lead us in this peace. We ask and we pray in the name of our Savior, Jesus Christ. And may all of God's people say, Amen. God bless you. I hope you're having a good week. And I hope you'll continue to join us as we move toward Easter and the hope of our Lord Jesus Christ. We'll talk to you next time. Have a good day.